Hi, I'm Stacey and welcome back to my YouTube channel and today we are talking about the Vivado IP generator. So IP cores are provided by major vendors like Xilinx and Altera and there's some really cool tricks and tips about the IP core generator that I'll share with you today. And we're also going to go briefly over generating an IP core because I'm going to be doing that in my next video and I want to give you a bit of a tutorial now. I've just opened up my UART design and my UART design is from a couple of videos ago. If you want to check it out, it's a URTX. So if I go to IP catalog, this is in Vivado. Quartus has its own IP catalog that also operates similarly. So if I go over to IP catalog over here and I put in FIFO, then I can choose a FIFO that I want to generate. And so there's Axie stream FIFOs and I'm just going to be choosing FIFO generator over here and we double click. And so what this is, it's like a little customizable wizard that you go through on the PC and it generates the code for you. And sometimes you can see the code that it generates and other times you can't. So sometimes it's encrypted or, or pre-compiled so that you can't actually see the code that's in it. But other times you can, it just depends on the vendor and what they choose to do. So in this case, I'm going to be generating an Axie stream core. This FIFO generator is quite convenient because it gives you a little table of all the different combinations of things that you can do. I'm going to be choosing Axie stream because I'm going to be demonstrating the Axie stream interface next video and I need an Axie stream for that. It's going to be a common clock. Independent clock means that the clock read and write are different clocks. So the first trick that I will tell you about is that you can set the IP location here. You don't have to put your IP inside your project. And for the purposes of version control, it's actually really nice to have it outside the project because then you can commit it to the repo and you have it separately from all of the automatically generated Xilinx Vivado files in the project. So I almost always choose a different IP location. So I'm going to choose an IP location that is outside. So I'm going to choose that IP folder for my IP core. And that just means that I can put it in a repo happily and I don't have to worry about version controlling the whole project. So I'm going to give it a name, TX54, and we're going to go into the next. So my TX54 is only going to be eight bits or one byte wide. So I'm going to keep that as one. I just want all of these to be zero. ID, DES, and user can all be zero and I don't want to loss. So everything is empty practically. FIFO depth is 1024 and that's it. Click go. So there it's generating. And you can go through these and you can see what they have. There's some really, really cool cores out there. The second tip that I want to show you is if we head over to IP sources over here, you can see here's my new FIFO that I've just created. Now I want to incorporate my FIFO into my design. So say, for example, I'm going to be putting it in my URTX. So I can go to IP cores and I can open this and I can see there's an instantiation template here. And what this is, it's a handy piece of code that you can copy and paste into your project. It has the VEO1 is Verilog and the VHO1 is VHDL. And there you have it. And the VHDL will give you both the components instance and the port map instance as you need them. Sometimes also what you see in this, you could also get example code. So say, for example, if I head over to the IP catalog, I'm just going to create myself a for a compiler and I'm just going to click OK to use the default settings, generate. So you can see my for a compiler appear there. Thank you. And now if I go to my fur compiler, not all of them, some of them have source code in this. So you can see for my fur compiler, not only do I have an instantiation template, you also get given a simulation model. So here is a test bench. It's my attainment example code for my fur compiler. And so if I head down here, they have kindly given me example code. This is VHDL, my test bench for my compiler. And there's C simulation code here. If you want to have some code for in C that you want to use to model your filter, you could do that. There's a test bench here, which is the one that I've opened. And so very, very often for the IP cores, there will also be example code supplied. And people don't know about this. You don't know that you can get a whole set of example code with your IP core. In the fur compiler case, it's here. There's two places where you can get example code for your IP core. And I will show you both of them. This is the one spot where you get example code. So for your fur compiler, you head over to IP sources. So there's your hierarchy. 
you head over to IP sources, span this, and you check here for some example code, example test page code. For the TX FIFO, you can also right click and go open IP example design. So we click open IP and I'm going to change this to FIFO example. I'm going to use that folder. Yes, it's okay to create the directory. So now Vivado is going to make me a free example for how I use my FIFO. And it, it I'll show you. And what's cool about this is that actually I was digging through this the other day because I um, wanted to see how they did their test bench because I was thinking about making a video on test benches and they, they use a linear feedback shift register for their data generation in their example FIFO. It's an 8-bit linear feedback shift register. And I thought it was really cool because they have VHDL linear feedback shift register code in their test bench. So this is now a new project that it's created that is the example code for my FIFO. So if we look in this, we can see that this is my FIFO instance. That's my guy there. There's my TX FIFO. And this is a top level FIFO uh, wrapper by the looks of things. And then this, this is data gen for the FIFO test bench. So this is a FIFO test bench. And this is a linear feedback shift register. Isn't that cool? So I don't know what bit, what bit combinations they're exclusive oring with here, but this is a linear feedback shift register in the example code. And if we look at this, you can go run simulation and you can simulate it. This is really nice code. If you want to see how to use an IP core, you can use the example code. There's two ways to get it. Either you right click and go open example design or you expand the core in IP, on the IP sources tab and with the instantiation template they will also give you examples and here's my simulation test bench so all I did is I opened this example project and I just went run simulation and now I have an example working functional simulation for my IP core isn't that cool um, so lots of these cores have them the more complex ones have different models and C or test benches um, so it's really fun if you want to familiarize yourself with the Axie interfaces, this is how you can do that. So if you create an IP core and you want to put it in your project and you want to, and then you want to put it in version control. So this is the TX FIFO that I created recently and I can delete those file. Uh, and these are the only two files I need. I need the XCI file and the XML file. And if I put these files into version control, then that's all I need for my IP core. So I'm going to be putting these ones into version control. If I want to generate the other files, I just right click here and I go generate output products. And then it will create all of those other files for me around those two files. So it's just the XCI and the XML generated successfully. This is how you generate an IP core in Vivado and how you can put it in a different location and how you can get example code from it in two different places and how you can save it to version control. And so say, for example, I wanted to, I've made some changes to my project and now I want to put my project in version control. Well, what I do is I go file project, right tickle, and then I choose the location of my tickle folder, tickle file, which is this one, and I go save. And then what this does is it puts my whole project into one tickle file so that all the settings and everything are included. So the only thing you need are your tickle file, which is a script, and then all of your source. So your IP cores, which is XML and XCI, and your Verilog or VHDL sources. And so this way you can save your projects to your repo without including any external or automatically generated files. And that's this is the method that I use. And so all of the examples will have tickle scripts that you can use to open your project, the open the projects that I use. And then if you want to resave the tickle script, you just go file project right tickle. And that will allow you to update the tickle script with the new files. And that's it. And I hope that this is going to be helpful to you. And in the next video, I'm going to go over Axie Stream, what it is and how we use it. And I'm going to be extending my UART project to be including an Axie Stream FIFO for us to use to FIFO our samples into the UART. I hope that this was helpful to you. 
and I thank you for your time and I appreciate you and I'll see you next time.